I'm recording this on my iPhone tonight, uh, and I've got to be a little bit quiet because everyone has gone to bed, but it has been a somewhat productive day, mostly in the realm of painting a house, but, uh, you know, let's talk about changelings a little bit. So I'm uh, recording here on my iPhone. I got a, I got a brand new iPhone, the XS, and I got the, um, I'm recording the sound on a uh, Sennheiser clip mic, which I'm kind of excited about. It's the first time I'm actually using it. I think it sounds pretty fabulous. I have, uh, I'm lucky enough to have a couple of Sennheiser microphones, the proper wireless ones in my kit. But I have to say that just having a little tiny mic that I can plug into my lightning cable or lightning port on the uh, iPhone and then get Sennheiser quality sound is amazing. Uh, it's actually a pretty great tool if you're a documentary filmmaker. You uh, are, you know, if you're on the road and, oh, great interview happens to fall in your lap, boom, you've got the phone, which does 4K quality. It's kind of amazing. And then the Sennheiser. So you just are, you're just not going to be without good sound. And, you know, and that's one thing about, um, say, working in unscripted television, which is where my uh, area of expertise sort of lies, is that, you know, with audio, you can do anything. With cinema, it's all about the picture. Uh, but with unscripted television, as long as you have the audio, you can probably build a scene out of anything. It's kind of amazing. I've watched editors turn nothing, uh, no, you know, a non-visual moment into something pretty compelling. And it just requires the audio because you can, because um, it's very much like a play. And in plays, you know, it's not a, an extremely visual medium. You, you, it's really left, you know, a lot of it's left up to the imagination. And so because people have vivid imaginations with a few simple pictures, and as long as you have the audio, you've got something to build from. Um, and so I'm excited to have good audio wherever I go. I know I'm not, PS, I'm not being paid for this. I just think it's a great little microphone. Other than that, uh, we've got some, a little bit, not much progress in changing today. I've got to actually sit down and work on the, uh, the uh, lookbook for the next, at least for tonight, for maybe, you know, half hour before I pass out. And then for the next couple of days to really get uh, the visual style lined up and to figure out, or really to make something more concrete than I think uh, Changelings has been in the past. I have a very good idea of what I want. I just haven't written it all down. So I think, so in the next few days, I'm going to really work on getting this pitch packet complete and ready for my meeting with Bennett. If you are ever making a film, a lookbook is a great place to start. The lookbook is a field guide for your film so that you know the aesthetics from moment to moment, how you want everything to look and feel. Uh, it also carries with it a synopsis of the story and a log line to keep you on track. It carries everything about the film, the characters, uh, the locations, the, the look, you know, uh, examples from other films of how you want the aesthetic to be, examples of how you want close-ups to be, examples how you want wide shots to be, color palettes. I mean, it really does contain everything. I want to have a good idea going to my meeting with Bennett and uh, Zane next week a much clearer idea how I want the film to look. I have a really good idea of how I want some of the transformation to take place for Changelings. I'll put a link below to a post that I wrote on my Steam account so you can have a really good idea of how much suffering is gonna be taking place with the character as they transform. Like I said in entry number 12 for the vlog marathon, uh, I really appreciate in American Worlds in London how the character was really made to suffer during his transformation. Because I, I, not much is given to that aspect of films, or at least creature transformations. I feel like people want to get beyond the creature transformation and just sort of get on with it. But it's something, it's something so vital to the character um, to go through that much agony every time you have to change your life. And I think that that is a really good metaphor for changing your life. Uh, you know, it's very difficult. It can be extremely painful. And I think the, I think that to gloss over that aspect in this film would be doing a disservice to the characters. And those are the kinds of thoughts that I need to get down on paper. I mean, they're all in my head, but it's difficult to communicate that to somebody who isn't in your head. So that aspect of the story is something I definitely want to keep front and center when the creatures are transforming. So I'll put a link down below. You can see some of the examples I gave of how I want the creature transformation to sort of proceed. It involves a lot of sunburn picks, like some really gross sunburn picks. So NSFW, and if you're queasy ever, 
you might not want to take a look. But if you're interested, if you're intrigued, if you want to know how I see this character uh, transforming and you know suffering, uh, you know, take a look at the link below. All right, that's it, guys. Uh, I've got to get to work on the lookbook, and I will see you tomorrow.